Next, Common Ground. Christmas is, of course, one of Christendom's holiest days. And a good time, we thought, for a reminder that the religions that sometimes divide us have much history in common. Here's Seth Dorn. That I will make mistakes and that God forgives me. This is a faith club, bringing neighbors together on a quiet block in Buffalo, New York. As a Christian, we're taught that we must forgive because Christ forgave us. Muslims, Jews, and Christians finding themselves through knowing each other's faith. I just think it's amazing. All of our focus is to try to understand each other better. This group was started by Lori Newberg, a Jewish woman in search of an answer to a not-so-simple question. Why are there so many problems in this world? We're so similar. Her mission of faith even took her to Jerusalem, a city that symbolizes all which unites us and sometimes divides us. The golden rule has been developed independently in every single one of the major world traditions. Karen Armstrong is a renowned religious historian. Do not do to others what you would not like them to do to you. And said to be the essence of faith. During the holidays, we're reminded to love thy neighbor. But in the headlines and throughout history, religion often seems less than a force for good. From the Muslim conquests, to Catholic crusades, to the genocides of today. The religions which should be making a major contribution to the chief task of our time, which is to build a global community where people can live together in harmony and respect, are seen as part of the problem for obvious reasons. But is religion really to blame? Armstrong, a former nun, isn't so sure. The problem has been human aggression, human greed, human ambition, human ego. The world faiths actually all began with a principled revulsion from violence. Probing the common roots of the three religious traditions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, is the goal of an exhibit at the New York Public Library. Yes, there have been rough times. It's very easy to talk about those, but it's much more interesting, I think, to talk about what they have in common, the traditions that they share, because I think that as people know more about other faith traditions besides their own, they will see that the people standing next to them or on the street are not that different from them. David Wachtel is one of the curators of the exhibit and a scholar of his Jewish faith. Among the commonalities of these three faith traditions, that they all take their inspiration from the belief of a single man 3,700 years ago, Abraham. Look closely. The story of Abraham's life is depicted in the margins of this Hebrew text. Right next to it, a similar drawing in an Arabic text. The similarities continue. Christians, Jews, and Muslims are all monotheistic. All believe in one God and share the idea that God's Word came to them through revelation. Each relies on a text, the Bible, the Torah, or the Quran, to provide history and inspiration. So much in common, yet... We find ourselves now in a time where the world is pretty much mired in conflict in many places, and there is tension between members of these three faiths who, after all, are essentially cousins. For Americans, of course, that tension came to the forefront in 2001. After the events of 9-11, I worried about the future of my children uh, being American-born. I knew one thing, I needed them to be both American, Muslim, and proud. At the time, New Yorker Rania Idlibi felt isolated, so she reached out to Suzanne Oliver, a Christian. Their kids shared the same school. And then here was this lovely Muslim woman at my bus stop, and she wasn't looking like the jihadis that we were seeing on the cover of the New York Times. Then Oliver asked a friend of a friend, Priscilla Warner, a Jewish woman, to join in. So we were all strangers to each other, which made the conversations all the more 
interesting and heightened because there really wasn't a friendship at stake. Their faith club became the backbone of a book they co-wrote, and that inspired other faith clubs, like the one we saw in Buffalo. We have to be encouraged to talk about it because otherwise your fears and your stereotypes um, continue to, um, to grow. Anne says Karen Armstrong, one thing can lead to another. If the silent majority got active and instead of talking about their religion, uh, started doing what their religions tell them to do, um, they could change the world. Cooperation is a value within every particular faith tradition. Ibu Patel is the founder of the Chicago-based Interfaith Youth Corps, which promotes dialogue and action on 150 college campuses nationwide. Why focus on youth, on, on college students? I think about Martin Luther King Jr., who heard about Mahatma Gandhi, the great Hindu leader in India, when he was a student and decided at that point that he was going to find the dimensions of his own Christian tradition, which connected with the service and peacemaking dimensions of Gandhi's Hindu tradition. Why not just say giving back is important, volunteering is important, why see it through a religious lens? My religion of Islam inspires me to serve others. And poll after poll after poll shows that the United States, a a huge number of its citizens are inspired to do good work for other people through their religions. Religion as a force for good, just like the Bible tells us, and the Quran, and the Torah. Books from different faith traditions can live in the same cases together and get along. And maybe that can be a lesson to people as well. Just remember, the golden rule. Unless we learn to treat all peoples, all nations, as we would wish to be treated ourselves, we are not going to have a viable world to hand on to our children and grandchildren. Can we depart this afternoon?